Lights, camera, action! We're shooting threes, just SMB. We're gonna watch and review film trilogies. It's all for laughs, so just sit back. We're gonna drop hella dimes on this podcast. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the podcast. Oh. We're shooting threes. We're back. We're back, I'm baby. I'm Sarah Griffith. I'm Bridget Greenberg. And we've got a brand new trilogy coming at you. Dunna, 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 Jaws. That sounded like Batman. Uh, you did a little, okay. you went, you skewed a little Batman there. Well, we'll have to talk about that in Arboration because I thought I was dead on John Williams' Jaws. Uh, what, uh, he went off. But we talk at Jaws, baby. Amity means friendship, but we're two friends. We're going to be talking about our big, scary shark baby in that sexy, sexy water on that yeah. fun summer at that beach. With the with that hot cop. And that terrible mayor who actually, unfortunately, was maybe just an image of our future leadership to come. Sure. Yes. Yes. And hot Richard Dreyfus. And hot Richard Dreyfus, most importantly. He's... Should we... Should we, do, do you just want to dive do in we, on this bitch? Here, you just want to go? Here's here's an offer I'm going to make you. Okay. Um, you can take the blue pill, and we can see how deep the waters of Amnity go. Mm. Or we can take a red pill, and we can talk about the actual movie we watched last night, The Matrix. Whoa! Oh, oh my God. Oh, we switched in, it baby. up on you. Let's talk tricks, bitch. I love this film. There is so much to discuss. So it much. It's good to be watching, like, legitimately a fucking good incredible movie? film yeah. for once it, yeah. in our podcasting careers. Okay, An absolute well. damn banger. All right, true. Uh, but-, but The Matrix kicks a lot of ass. Let's talk about the decision making process that led to this. Uh, yeah. So I, uh, I have a couple things to say. I pitched Jaws. Um, the you guys, you lovely listeners, were all very kind and said, you know, your captain will follow you. I'm, we're not sure if Josh is a trilogy. It was a major consensus uh, consensus we got, but you guys trusted us, and I I appreciate that so much. But I don't want to coast by. On my charm, all right. I want to mm. do. I want to play by the rules uh, and and win by my own rules. If I coast by, it's going to be because of the millions of dollars I make. Uh, right. Uh, that's why. Not not just and your looks and my in my looks. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't want to hear anything about. Uh, you'll just listen to whatever we put out. We're gonna. We're gonna do this the right way. Uh, and yes, also, and by right way. Yeah, right way. We mean watch a franchise that is technically no longer a trilogy yeah no i texted that that uh <laughs> but it is yeah it still is for the time being uh resurrections trailer came out and i immediately texted sarah it's like i guess we have to do this now before it's no longer a trilogy yeah our window is closing um yeah and, in terms of the matrix still being a trilogy yeah. despite the fact it is a part of our major cover art like it is a big we part- have really solidified it as a true trilogy uh michael vincent bramley has done an amazing job with our cover art but uh most of uh the the film references in it uh are no longer trilogies uh and if there's still trilogies today give me 10 years baby yeah uh yeah so we're uh coming under the wire with this one while we can still consider it uh, a trilogy uh in we a are manipulating months. the wire to create our own yeah version of the wire in which the wire truly only exists as an image in our mind yes uh matrix four never happened it's not happening no so i haven't seen it yet so it doesn't exist it doesn't exist uh nothing exists unless we see it but uh yeah we're gonna it's still a trilogy as of the time of recording uh because no one has seen four so uh yeah are we bending the rules you know what are rules as this movie would tell you, what is reality? What are rules? There, there is no spoon. There is no spoon. There is no resurrections trailer. Uh, right. But yeah, uh, we watched a good movie, and what a breath of fresh air! Yes, this movie is fucking awesome. Yes, and I actually am coming in with a lot of homework done because there's mm. something I want to talk about as we talk about this film that I and you both, as cisgender women, I feel like 
we needed to expand uh, some reading material because this film, I feel like I'm saying something you may not know, but are you aware that this film in the last decade has really come through as like maybe the most important piece of mainstream trans media oh, yeah. in the history of anything? Yeah, it's so funny how like the red pill got uh, like co-opted into and this. And we could like, talk about this forever. Uh, yeah, and I don't want to, but uh, yeah, it got co-opted into this like gross uh, incel right wing rabbit hole, but it is so clearly, uh, I don't know if they, I mean, I'm sure they knew this somewhere at the time the Wachowski. Yeah, so yeah, yeah so I don't know how is, much they've talked um, about it. Well, so I this is what I'm saying. I'm actually coming in with like a lot of Yeah, homework that's why I wanted to defer to you. I I, I, I do know so. <laughs> and like as as I was watching, I you know, it's hard not to pick up on yeah, it. Yeah, you know, but it's like I had to go to the right. source. Yeah. To I, I haven't heard sure. I haven't heard the Wachowski sisters talk about it. Uh or yeah, mention. So um yeah, this is actually maybe like the first podcast we ever do where I'm gonna like put in liner notes with links to some articles and videos that I've read that I think are important supplemental sure. reading. Obviously, all I can give is like a summary of what I've learned mm -hmm. and like a sympathy to what I've learned, but yeah. understanding is totally different and you should defer to um, some of these authors I'm going to name. But I did actually right before this watch, there's like a little four minute video um, from the Netflix film club titled Why the Matrix... Why the Matrix is a Trans Story According to Lily Wachowski. Oh, great. And so what she talks about is not literally when she and her sister wrote this film, it was absolutely a trans piece of work. And that was, you know, the driving creative vision when they were writing this film. But it was definitely a presence for them. She kind of talked about how there was a feeling of like their reality wasn't real. Right. Um, I have a quote here. Yeah. So in um the Netflix documentary called Disclosure, I think it came out in like 2019. Right. It's about yeah. trans representation in media. Uh Lily Wachowski talks about the quote burbling undercurrent of rage that I felt not being able to be who I was. Mm -hmm. And so in this video that I watched from uh Netflix Film Club, she kind of talks about how like it's good that we are putting a more literal term to it, to it calling it trans allegory, being able to be specific in the language. Language. Right. But at the time that they were making this film, it was that, but a kind of a bigger idea of like, what if your accepted reality is not actual reality? Um, how do we think of ourselves, our perceived image? How do we fit into what we perceive to be the world? And just kind of like a bigger picture. She was speaking to it more. I think as a filmmaker versus like as a trans woman herself, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, cause I mean, this is like her work and I think it yeah. would be unfair to say this is about one thing. Cause there's a lot of themes. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. This movie has a lot going on, but uh, yes. yeah. But I do want to acknowledge that. Yes. The filmmakers I think are aware of it. I think they're very accepting of it. I think they agree if I had to, based on what I've watched. Um, and Keanu Reeves, very famously, when he was told that this film is a trans allegory, he described it as being cool. So thank you, Keanu Reeves. Ally, friend. Uh, King. Keanu Reeves. Uh, uh, he yeah. is so cute in this movie. Oh, my. Let's just dive in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So I just want to say before we get into the nitty gritty, I watch this on HBO Max. Same. Okay. I thought... I don't know the technical, I didn't go to film school. I don't know the technical language here, but like the transfer of this film in 4K was like bad. Well, I don't have a 4K TV. I don't think this TV is 4K. Uh, there was just like, like there were many scenes where like the whites of the picture were like visibly blown out. Yes. And then they would have cuts within the same scene that like literally looked like two different people edited or like two different color gradings were happening at the yeah. same time. I don't know what happened to this being on HBO Max, but it sounded bad too. I don't know if you had that problem, but I, I didn't have that problem, or at least with the sound. I think it's just uh because this is something I want to talk about too. This movie aged uh weirdly, because at the time, not not content wise, but like visually, stylistically, because at yes. the time, like at the time, the first time I remember watching it, I remember that first time Trinity goes up to do that kick and jumps and pauses Ugh. was like 
the most insane. It's iconic. Literally iconic. And this time you were just like, yeah, it's kind of like, that's cool. She kicked him. But that's, uh, eh. <laughs> like, it, it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think, like, the the marveling at uh, the cool effects, like, that is definitely lost now. But the style, I think, is still right on. Uh, the style's right on. They did a lot of, like, interesting and specific things with color grading in this movie to make it yes. look unnatural. And I think that's what you're seeing. Yes. I think we're just used to seeing um, better effects in 2021. Yeah, I- I'm telling you, there were literally, like, within the same scene of the movie, I, I don't know, like, there was just a few times that I was like, dude, I am looking at something... That has not been either well preserved or something. Because ha- I do also know that this is like this film, the original Spider Man trilogy, like a lot of movies that came out in this time, mm-hmm. um, have fallen victim to like every time it's translated to a new medium. Right. It like visually looks yeah. different. Uh, yeah. I mean, and they were shooting. I mean, this is obviously a digitally shot movie. It's not like it was shot on film cameras, but it's shot on yeah. the technology of 1999. So it's like one of the. You know, yeah. It, I mean, it was it just, early days of shooting digitally, like very early days of shooting digitally. Yeah. Really. So I think there is some lagging. I think it it doesn't look good anymore. And also, like the the choices that they made to make the world look uh, cyber punky and and gross and gritty. Like there is no blue in this movie, uh, right? At all because uh, uh, the Wachowskis. Uh, thought blue was too like natural which is funny because it is the least natural color in nature that's so interesting. it is the yeah, least found co- uh, color in yeah nature. there's no food in naturally that's like blue blueberry but is that's yeah but that looks more yeah purple or Black. navy yeah uh it is the yeah i just said that to be a dick uh <laughs> I, I'm right. You're no, you're absolutely right. But that was just like I, I had that. It was not. It was just a reaction of like Bridget being. Yeah, dick it, now. it's <laughs> definitely a visual palette that is manufactured. Yes, it looks very like toxic, which I do and, love. Yes. Um. Yeah, I mean it. It fits this movie. But uh, let let's talk about the plot. We 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 meet Neo. Uh. Ugh. Or I mean, that's not the first thing that happens. No, there's like this intro with the screen kind of giving a narration of like you think you know right your world but you're dead fucking wrong bitch because we're about to blow your goddamn mind out of your skull and then we see trinity being a badass oh my god Uh, this opening sequence with trinity okay every fight i thought was so fucking kick ass i This movie came into my life right, actually, ironically, right as I was peeking into internalized misogyny, and yeah. I thought anything oh, that was girly was lame or stupid or boring. Right, so, like, so Trinity this was like an was icon. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, Trinity exactly. in all black. She's not wearing dresses, but androgynous haircut. Yeah. Like she she's just hot looks as so hell. Sleek. Uh, oh, Carrie Ann Moss is yeah. So Stunning. Yeah. She is the total package. She um, is fucking hot. This is, uh, so I read, they they made this movie for like, they shot it in Australia. They made it for $60 million, which is- Wow. Uh, yeah, incredibly cheap. I think it would have cost like $180 million if they shot it in the US. Uh, yeah. And Warner Brothers wouldn't have that at the time. They're like, you're not making this movie for yeah. that amount of money, uh, which is hilarious. Uh, but- yeah. uh, to think about now but uh yeah so their clothing is apparently super cheap her like shiny leather jumpsuit is made out of pvc this wow like from the pipes yes i'm familiar pvc and she and she does all her own she's the only one i think that does it looks like gautier or mugler like it looks very high fashion especially that was popular at the time like how fetish wear was becoming coming streetwear yeah and like how present like a lot of leather is. Yeah. Not uh, in this film, but like in a lot of the time right. period. It's just. No uh, one's wearing look, leather. I, Ke- Keanu Reeves is wearing some like wool blend jacket. Oh like my none God, of it's it, leather. Wow. That must have been hot to film in. Yeah. Um, I, I feel worse look, for PVC. That, uh, true. That sounds It's awful. a look that I myself would literally never wear. But no. I respect it so fucking much. No, if you much. can pull oh that off, God. you're cool. Yeah, I can't pull that off, but she can. and it's No cool. way. It's it's cool. No way. But also, you need to like... you I And I was thinking this in the beginning. You need to 
bring like you to to look like that to pull off those looks and like how they you have to be the real fucking deal because for sure if i were gonna take that red pill i need to 100 percent more trust morpheus is not is like the real fucking deal and not some fluke yeah and not some crazy man i followed into an abandoned apartment He's trying building. to like overdose yeah me. right right uh, exactly yeah it's insane yeah so this trinity opening sequence fucking rules um, I forgot like the sheer actually body horror of like Mr. Like Agent Smith like oh, yeah. bubbling in and out of people. Oh, I like still am like weird about belly buttons because of this movie. Oh yes. Oh, oh my, my god. god, that's so bad. I to this day like n- n- don't go near my belly button. I do not like it. It really freaks Ugh. me out. <laughs> yeah. So she's so so she zaps back into. The what's it mainframe? Uh, no. There's a name of that ship, but it's oh uh, the so... Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, wow, you know? Wow, okay, thank you. Yeah, I was like, they use a word for it, but it didn't I mean, that's the name of the ship is the Nebuchadnezzar. Great, uh, glad you know that. <laughs> um, and then we find our protagonist Neo. He is being contacted through his server. Yeah, from an anonymous source. Yeah. Um, we learn that he's actually just like a hacker guy. Yeah. Which is such a protagonist of 1999. Yes. yes. I also think it's funny. Um, yeah, we meet him. He hacks something for some of his weird cyberpunk friends. They, yes. They convince him to go to the world's scariest party. Uh, I, I love movies that go to these kinds of bars. Yeah. Because like, I'm sure they exist in real life. I'm sure. But- they always make it seem like that's where you go to have a secret meeting. Do you know how loud you would have to be yelling in people's Screaming. ears also, to be heard? Also, what would you if you walked into that party? Like, if we were at a night out and someone walked me into that party, I'd be like, "I gotta go. I this is bad. Like, I this is horrifying." Well, I would at least like walk up to the bar and try to order a damn drink. I feel like in movies, people walk into these places and like sit on the side. Well, like, they all have doing? tables at these clubs they all have to yeah for sure uh, for sure but yeah they walk into the world's scariest party neo's not having fun <laughs> <laughs> uh and then he sees trinity and they have this weird cryptic conversation but he realizes she is the one who uh got into his computer and he is like how did you do that and he has to be which means he is the world's worst hacker if he was like how did you get into my computer Dude, that's your whole maybe, job. Maybe, but maybe <laughs> because he is a hacker, it really is okay. Yeah, unexplained. Because sure. if you think about it digitally, it's like she is a ghost. Yeah, because she's not using any technology in the Matrix to hack into computer. She is using like technology that transcends the Matrix. Right. You know I, what I mean? Yeah. If his computer is super encrypted, because he, he is ha- She is hacking on hacking levels that. We as regular hackers have never seen hacked. That is true. I it's was just hacking, Bridget. Right, lots of hacking. Uh, Neo seems to know nothing about hacking. Not that I know anything about hacking, but he is an odd. You know it. what? Does anybody ever make a movie and they're like, as an expert in hacking, I'm the perfect person to write this screenplay? There is one movie that I have heard That's written in binary. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that <sighs> I. Oh man, I forgot what the movie is and someone will definitely know but there is one movie and it's like of course like not a very good movie and the last one you would expect that actually sure. has a very good uh depiction of hacking according to hackers but i am not hmm. one of them and apparently mr robot is pretty good uh i guess but, but you know what? honestly you could tell me anything i'm a dummy like i yeah you know when we go to the movies we don't go there to see nerd shit we want to see cool shit i mean this is nerd shit but it's cool nerd shit it is very cool nerd, sh- nerd shit very cool uh, um yeah. so after that happens i think there's like a transition scene or whatever but then the next time we see neo right he's at his job right or what we can assume at, is his job. Yeah, and uh, I I had to like rewind several times to try to catch the name of uh, the the name written on the building because I was like that can't be right. And then I like rewound. Oh, what was it? It was like mediocrix. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh boy, you see for like two seconds. It's, it doesn't matter. It's like yeah, meta metaocrix or something. Hmm. Where it's just a Did little you on also- the nose. Did you also clock that this city that like a lot of the matrixy stuff takes place in? is basically chicago yeah 
Uh, I mean, the, the street whole, names the gave sh- it away. Oh, yeah. See, I didn't. I've never been to Chicago. I've never had the pleasure. Uh, oh, there was like State and Balboa, Lakeside, and another one. And I was like, oh, bitch, these are stops on the L. Oh, well, they shot the whole thing in Sydney, Australia. So. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure the city's like an amalgamation of a bunch of different. Like, yeah. it's not a real. You know what I mean? It's but not. I did. Well, it's because like, I'm like, okay, Chicago. Reading the IMDb trivia, uh, as I'm calling other people nerds. Uh, um, they. You, oh, I read an academic paper, and w- I will be citing it actually. So oh, let's, I, let's get into this nerd. I shit. fucking can't wait. Uh, yeah. So apparently, at one point, you do see his passport, uh, and it does say like a city, and it's just called like you know cyber city usa mm, but uh yeah. well it, lily and lala are from chicago which was my suspicion oh okay yeah so they would know they would know so that i mean that makes sense but uh also this is uh a fun f- fact i guess i don't know this is just very random um okay and uh so you see all the passport information his uh his passport is going to expire on uh september 11th 2001 <laughs> You're kidding. No. <laughs> we shouldn't laugh. <laughs> but what a coincidence. But come on. Come on. Which is also funny because uh, Keanu Reeves would later star in a movie called Hardball um, about a, uh, a sad movie about an underfunded baseball team um, that would come out on September 11th, 2001. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a tough day to release a film. Yeah, there are a couple uh, <laughs> movies. First of all, who releases a movie on a Tuesday? I think Strike One. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> anyway, but since we're talking about, so we're looking at his ID, we're looking at his details. We learned that Neo's name in the Matrix is Thomas Anderson, yes. which many millions and billions of people for the last decade, like I'm not saying any new shit, uh, will come to identify Thomas Anderson as Neo's dead name. Mm. The name, like when we think, so uh, I read this great piece from Emily Vanderwerf. She's um, a film writer, critic. This piece is from Vox. It's called How the Matrix Universalized a Trans Experience and Help Me Accept My Own. And so one of the things she talks about is when she was first questioning her own gender identity, um, she, like even before she was even conscious of the fact that she was questioning, she was logging on to chat rooms in like early internet days and was logging on as a woman mm-hmm. and was identifying as a woman and was finding that she was more comfortable um, presenting femme, presenting as a woman than she did in her current identity. And so um, she talks specifically in this piece about how Neo is Thomas Anderson, like this person's um, digital identity. Right. Same with Trinity. When Neo meets Trinity at the bar, he says, I thought you were a man. And Trinity says, yeah, they all are, which I think is more of like a recognition of like yeah gender inequality yeah yeah, when yeah when we see these kind of or disparity names online we assume it's a man yeah um because we're a very patriarchal male right and certainly like any computery stuff would probably be a male dominated yeah probably still is yeah, yeah so i like the and the, uh, this is a recurring theme that we see later on like even in the way that agent smith mr smith always refers to neo as mr anderson right it's not only dead naming neo but it's identifying him as a man very specifically and mm-hmm. using it almost against him now neo is still a man in this movie i'm not trying to like right. introduce a bigger theory it's allegorical it's a metaphor everybody yeah. use your imagination here um but yeah i i, I thought uh, that's something that caught my ear this time that it had not in the past because i'd read this piece and this idea of like neo kind of more accepting his digital self as his real self versus the human being we see in the matrix who's in trouble because he keeps coming in late to work right no that uh you know yeah lines huge up a tangent p- for like 5 seconds of the film but uh <laughs> so from then though the movie really fucking starts. So this is when um, Neo is in his cubicle. He gets the call. It's Morpheus. And he knows, like, I've been waiting for this call. Oh, gave God. Me uh, this amazing scene. And the shit just pops off because it's like, they're coming for you. It's like, when are they coming for you? 
right, right n- fucking now, yeah. bitch, right now. D- for uh, when I <laughs> when I turned on the movie, I checked how long it was, and I was like, oh my god, this is over a two hour movie. I forgot how long this movie was. It flies by as at a clip. It really it does, does not feel like a two hour movie at all. The stakes are always very present. There's yes. always a very real threat. Like, you never get a moment's notice. We're going to talk about Cypher yeah. in a second. But so then we launch into a sequence that is retired, I think, as a filmmaking tool to this day. But remember when movies would have the thing where the character was running around getting directions from a cell phone? Yeah. Like, I think we've only recently phased that out in favor of like GPS. an AirPod or, yeah, like some other kind of AI technology. But back in the day, you used to just be talking to somebody on the phone and running around. Yeah, I guess. On your flip phone. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that doesn't really clock me as that strange. But uh... I just love, visually, I love to see it. I love to see yeah. people frantically running around on the phone. Sure. I love I love that when movies do sure. that. Sure. Uh, but yeah, I love, yeah, this like, you know, you get the omnipotent Morpheus directing him uh to make a scene in his office this is amazing yeah so he tries to escape doesn't work out because he doesn't yet fully understand that his power yeah he can really do whatever the fuck he wants um so he's captured oh my god um and then this is another moment of true body horror that i forgot about i even as an adult did not appreciate seeing neo is being interrogated by agent smith Uh uh-huh and he Neo's insisting he wants his phone call. And Agent Smith is like, well, a phone call isn't going to be worth a damn if you can't speak. And oh, then they the remove mouth. His oh, mouth. my God. I yeah. always. Yeah. I forgot about that. I don't too. like that. Horror. I don't like that. Oh, God. I don't like that. Horror. Ooh, and it starts to like, like, yeah. reach out and like. Close yeah. It like itself. drips oh, shut. God. Yeah. It like drips shut. It's truly like a <sighs> horror movie effect. That they do, um, and but then that like leads it. into, into my the, thing, yeah. the the elevation of the goddamn bug like they use in Star Trek that crawls in your ear that makes you tell I don't, the truth. I, but this is worse. This is worse. It's in the belly button. I don't know. Like, why did they make them look like bugs? They can make them look like anything. Why do they make it look like bugs? I don't yeah. like bugs at all. Uh, they didn't have to make it look like that weird thing it, it, with its tentacles and its weird little arms and it goes right into the belly button and now I can't stop feeling it. Like it is Ugh. it is awful and I don't like it and uh, yeah. I forget about it every single time. I forget about the scene. Like I've watched this movie quite a bit in my life and uh, I forget yeah. about this every time and I hate it every single time. Ugh. Uh, it's really bad, but it's also really good yes. in that it's a very 20th century idea of a bug being inserted into you yes. as like a torture device. Again, it is it harkens to Star Trek because they do yes. that there. It's also but it's 21st century yeah. in that it's like a little machine. It's a, Ooh, it's a little like machine. It. It's also massive. Like, how would he yes. not feel that thing? Oh, like, like that fucking thing in Attack of the Clones. Sorry to talk about Star Wars, but I'm going to mention it yeah. again. Oh, no, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, 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 what? no. That Oof. thing is huge. That's like half of his stomach is that bug. I, he knows that's there. He doesn't like forget about it. But anyway, somehow he does. He wakes up in yeah, he, back yes. in his bed like nothing ever happened. He doesn't remember any of this. But but then immediately is swooped up by Trinity and the gang. Yes. Uh, and then that's when they extract oh. it. And he's like, I thought that was a dream. Like, no, that really is a bit inside of you this whole time. Yeah. The the way they use the camera in this movie to like do reveals is is great. Uh, when he yes. gets in that car and you see it like from one side of the 180 and then you get in and you realize that Cypher's pointing a gun in his face is like such yeah. a like it's such a tiny moment, but it's such a cool reveal of like. Yeah, this yeah. was a. F- this is a film that is truly well made in that like everybody was thinking about things all the time. Yes. That there's a smarter way to say that. But like I truly appreciate when you're watching something and it's very clear that like no stone was left unturned. Yeah. Everybody's mind was running all the time they're making this film. Yeah. Well they made the Wachowskis made everyone read um the the kind of uh, the book on theory that it was based off of. The yes, sim- actually, sim- I could pull it up. Simulacra. Simu- Cara and simulation. Simulacra. 
yeah. simulations, uh, which I did skim and actually an academic, a critical analysis of the matrix, which is an academic paper that was published in 2018. I skimmed it. It didn't really say anything that I'm not going to reference it because yeah. it didn't really say anything that like I didn't already. Right. Y- yeah. No, it, but the idea of the but simulation actually, so, theory is all in there. So the uh, author of that piece, Baudrillard, mm-hmm. I'm pronouncing that as I feel is best fit, actually has uh, come out and said recently that The Matrix is a misinterpretation of his work. Oh, interesting. And I'm like, baby, if you think that, then then isn't it ironic that The Matrix create, like the film itself as a meta piece of art is a simulation of another academic body of work that writes about simulating reality. The rabbit hole, it just keeps going. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, so we and also Morpheus. When, we get to Morpheus. Also, just another fun fact uh, about the movie that means absolutely nothing. When Neo at the beginning of the book opens um, that book of all the mini DVDs with all his hackings yes. on it, that book is <laughs> that's that book. Yes, yes. And his apartment um, number is one hundred and one, like binary code. Do you have more little fun trivia facts you'd like to share? No, that's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure. Do you want to say what happens next in the movie, Bridget? Uh, yeah, she takes that big gun and she pulls a bug out of his belly button and I don't like oh. it again. Uh, <laughs> and then it like bleeds for some reason. Like it explodes in whatever vacuum she oh, sucked in. Oh, yes. And there's that blood is also in fucking it. awful. So I don't yes. like that. I don't like that it was actually living. I It calmed me down that it was a computer, but then no, it was bleeding. It so like, I didn't like yeah. it. Uh, I didn't like yeah. it even more then. Uh, but she, she takes Trinity and Cypher and the gang take, uh, and the driver. Oh, the driver. I do have another fun fact. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> it's not really a fun fact as much as a thing that I noticed, which seemed okay. lazy to me. The driver's the name is APOC, is. which is, um, a job in production. Uh, oh yeah. I, I found that like, that is just a thing that dinged me. Cause like. I've had work as an APOC. It's it's a uh, assistant production office coordinator. Oh, uh, interesting. I thought it was a play on the term epoch. I uh, maybe, but I I mean they had to but know that. No, your thing is probably right. It's like a little bit of a real to dialogue. Yeah, thing I, of like, I think they just hey, like if it already has a cool name in the industry, may as well just fucking use it. <laughs> yeah, I think they probably just heard someone being referred to as the APOC on set, and they were just like, oh, cool. Sounds A-pop. good. Uh, but yeah, they take him to meet Morpheus where we get one of the like coolest uh, sequences of dialogue uh, we have in Lawrence film. Lawrence Fishburne fucking rules. Oh my and God. fucking rules in this film. So much. Uh, and all of that dialogue between Morpheus and Neo, I, there were like a few quotes that I wrote down, but then I was like, really everything that is being discussed here is like yeah. fucking beautiful. Yeah. And Reson- I mean, obviously, like, when I first saw this movie, I was a kid. Yeah. And so I just thought it was kind of cool, like, oh, different realities, whatever. But, yeah. like, as an adult yeah. and with, like, an expanded view of this film, especially in regards to gender, I mean, fuck. Like, it's... Yeah, the the it's taken on more. And especially as, like, people know more about simulation theory and... Uh, yes. The world is collapsing on us. And... Uh, yeah, a friend, a friend of mine who kind of called some articles for me to read, Chandler, she made a great point, like... It's one of those movies that actually the more you read about it, the better it becomes. Yeah, I what I really like I love that so much about this movie <laughs> and it kind of comes goes downhill from here as a trilogy. But I'm not familiar with the other Oh, okay. Well, we'll find out the hard well, way, well, I guess. Yeah. Huh? Um, but uh yeah, what I what I really like and what I think uh gets lost in most in almost every action movie and especially like a high concept action movie is that Mm. as the audience, uh, and we certainly know this from our beloved Fast and Furious franchise, uh, the plot in a lot of these kinds of movies gets yada, yada, yada. Like, yes. uh, And I don't feel that way. Like there, there are a lot of things like how did you move from point A to point B, but like everything makes sense and adds up. Like I can, I, you know, I love being an asshole and poking holes and things, but like, yeah, I mean, this one is, Hard it's pretty tight to do that. It's pretty it's pretty tight. I mean like certainly you can but it is pretty it's pretty tight and like yeah, you you can be like all right, this is how they got from point A to point B at all like all the yeah. time. Yeah. 
I actually read a the original New York Times review from 1999, and they brought up the fact that like, um, it's it spends like half of its movie really setting up the plot. Yeah, but it doesn't feel like a damn dirge because yeah. they're setting up the plot and explaining the world in real time. Right. So like. You're Jumping learning with little... Neo, like it, it's yeah, such exactly. a good. Like, and there's a whole kung fu sequence that, like, yeah. explains the rules of the world, and it's like it never stops being visually interesting. Yes. But also, what is being said is so fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just, and it's yeah. heavy. Like, it's a big concept to yeah. like try to pass off. I also, I read, I read a book years ago, and I meant to like reread this chapter, but it's a book by is one of my favorite authors, and I think anybody who worked at Cracked has read a lot of his work. Uh, Chuck Klosterman. And uh, mm. he's a, you know, he has some great books of essays on pop culture and thinks very, like, deeply about this stuff and has a lot of interesting stuff right. to say. Uh, there is a whole chapter in one of his books, I believe it's Eating the Dinosaur. Uh, it's either that or Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs. Uh, that uh, <laughs> uh, that talks about this whole stint in movies from, like, 1999, starting with The Matrix through 2001, where... There are a lot of movies that came out that question that are about questioning the nature of reality. So, yes. Uh, and this, like, definitely kicks it off. You have movies like Donnie Darko coming out at that time. You Fight have Fight Club. Fight Club, certainly one of them. Being John Malkovich, being arguably. Yeah, he talks about being John Malkovich. The, the, the whole chapter ends up being. Truman Show, is that? Truman Show, sir. Yeah, uh, fits Time in there. I think that's before the time a little I, early i yeah. think that's a little early but uh i mean the essay ends up being about uh vanilla sky which is certainly at the tail end of these movies mm, uh yes. after we've beaten the dead horse a little bit but uh this certainly kicks it off and like i i think there's something interesting to be said like entering the 21st century like obviously we're gonna start technology is gonna start exponentially growing from here we have like a y2k fear that like computers are gonna take over um yeah and it's yeah it's certainly like the the nature of reality and as that is transforming into like a more online world this movie is like it's a really interesting take at the beginning of this whole uh internet fad that we're about to go into yes uh, and also the fact that this film was released in 1999 i feel like that is so it, it really is emblematic of the moment that yeah. everybody was living in, which is like, okay, our reality yeah. is shifting. Our reality is different. Uh, yeah. Um, I love how we can make, like, it, it's a very specific time where you can make a movie this heady. Um, it was a studio note, I believe, to, like, put in this much exposition, but it all works because it is such an interesting concept. And I think uh, to most people at this time, a pretty new concept. Uh, and we're at a time in 1999 where we can wrap our heads around it because like the internet's starting to become more accessible and these different lives yeah. and worlds are starting to become more accessible that uh, people are opening are opening up to listening to this kinds of things. Uh, right. Uh, and and like literally all the films that we've named in addition to a few others, isn't it interesting how the movies that challenge reality are almost comically the same list of movies that like characteristically cis hetero white men have misunderstood. Yes. Oh my God. Or who have co-opted to fit a narrative of patriarchy right. and almost a fear response to inclusivity. Right. Like, okay, the power is starting to change and like my prototype of a human right. being is not the most powerful anymore, even though like they still, don't worry, you still definitely right. are. Right. Well, like, they they created their own uh reality around yeah. the movie like they they truly created their own matrix to to purposely or subconsciously misunderstand the point of these movies uh that well, that um, things are being more democratic and open to anybody and uh yeah they they've created their own worlds around these movies where that uh is yes. a smaller more narrow minded concept well, not to get like too heady, um, but I do want to reference this piece by Andrea Long Chu called What We Can Learn About Gender from the Matrix. This is from Vulture in 2019. Again, I'm going to post all these links because I think all these pieces should yeah. be read in full. But um, she kind of brings up this point about like we were talking about like this character of this kind of white guy who feels like, I mean, the men's rights activist taking red mm -hmm. pill. Yeah. You know, and by the way, I didn't know this, but apparently estrogen pills like hormonal yeah. therapy pills um 
that contained estrogen. I don't know why I had to repeat myself like that. Yeah. Um, they were literally red pills in the 90s. Oh, interesting. Like it could not be a more direct correlation. They um than like literally it was a red pill. Uh when I, I don't know if this is an appropriate question. Do we when did the Chowskis or start transitioning? So are you asking? Yes. Yeah, so um, unfortunately, I think Lana was outed in like oh, 2013. Yeah. I think it was like a Daily Mail shitty hit piece, really. Yeah. So she was outed. And then I think Lily I followed her. Right. Um, and, and came out on her own publicly in 2016. But in terms of privately, not sure what that timeline gotcha. is. Okay. Um, not sure when they began to question. I definitely think like we are I mean, in that era, yes. but I, obviously we can't speak for Yeah, it. exactly. Okay. Um, but what Andrea Chu brings up in this piece about gender in the Matrix is that she actually maybe presupposes that like these men who so quickly co-opted the messages of Fight Club, which is like anarchy, and we can create our own version of capitalism that's underground where it's like, that's not... Right. You know what I mean? Like these, the these misinterpretations, yeah. it's almost like these men got close to their own femininity and their own challenge of reality and in lieu of questioning that further and and maybe expanding and like literally transcending what they think they know there was a fear response and so they yeah, hunkered down it was reactionary into, yeah they swung yeah. in the other direction so interesting well i don't think we're going to be able to plot for plot talk about this movie. no i mean there's so many heady <laughs> concepts to like go on a tangent about there's a lot to discuss and i would rather discuss than worry about where we're at in the film if you haven't already seen this movie first of all we're like 42 minutes in shame on we're you. we're yeah we're at the end of that like we're beginning act two right now uh but anyway surprise yes. neo takes but i think we can move we yeah. can we can move through like the morpheus and neo training stuff i do also want to mention oh no since i mean that's... i'm sorry go ahead what do you okay well i just wanted to when neo wakes up in like that ambient go- yeah which that is also a moment of true body horror for me. Like, I don't like oh, that. Yeah. My God, I hate it seeing that. I don't like him bald. I uh, um, he shaved his whole body. He lost fifteen pounds for that yeah. scene. But this is this is a this is a fun fact, Bridget. I have one of your little fun oh. facts. Um, in this Emily Venderwerf piece that I've been referencing, I learned that many trans people, especially online. Ref- let me actually just read this quote verbatim because I'm not about to. <laughs> yeah. Like, let me just read this. I don't know why I'm trying so hard. Okay. So, and this is how the article begins. Quote, some online trans communities have a word for trans people who haven't realized they're trans yet. Egg. Oh. And like part of this piece is talking about how this is an eggy movie and like literally Neo wakes up in a, a fucking, fucking egg. egg. Uh- like it could not be more... This is also something I I had to research and also a little fun facty uh and and not really anything but uh, uh Cypher calls Neo Copper Top and I thought that was really fucking weird. I don't it stood yeah. it it stood out to me this time. I I never noticed it before. I was like Copper Top. He doesn't have red hair. Uh but uh that refers to him being a battery Morpheus uh, oh. takes out a Duracell battery right? and says, like, this is you. This is what they're turning you into. So that's why she calls him Copper Top because uh, he's a battery. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so, I mean, I, I guess it's worth explaining. I mean, we've. I'm sure most of you have seen this movie, but I guess it's worth explaining the plot. At least once. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the whole conceit of the Matrix. Uh, yes. Which is that uh, humans created... AI that eventually they don't know who started the war first um, but someone struck first and then it became a human v robot war uh, the robots uh, were uh, designed to charge to get power from the sun so humans had the bright idea to scorch the sky uh, thinking that would uh, take them out turns out typical typical humans uh, dumb idea uh, uh, they Humans couldn't live without the sun. The robots realize that the human body has like the amount of electricity that can power the sun. So they have uh, turned us into batteries so they can. Did you get out of breath saying? <laughs> Uh, I got a little confused. Yeah, you, you know, as I breath. was just... You audibly tend to take a breath. Uh, yeah, as I was just saying how, like, clean You're doing a great are. job. This is literally Thank you. perfect. You're uh, doing a great yeah, job. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I got lost in my own words as I was, like, explaining it as I was 
earlier saying how clean these movies are, but uh, it makes more sense when they say it, when uh, Lawrence Fishburne says it. It's much more poetic. Uh, Watch the movie. It's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, it's actually kind of meta because there is that scene where it's like you talk about the things you know versus the things that you do. And it's like, I understand the plot of The Matrix. I don't think I could explain it succinctly if somebody asked me to explain it. Uh, Yeah, I mean, basically... uh, our lives are, we all live in that little pod. Uh, the life and world as we know it is basically a simulation that these robots are uh, running us through so we don't, we as humans, uh, don't uprise. Like, they're they're playing out our nice little Which, by the way, the if that is the current, yeah. yeah, if that is the current reality that we're living in, the robots need to do, like, a way better yeah. job because we're pretty antsy down well, here. Well, the people who talk about... Uh, you know, the big simulation theorists are like, yeah, we're at the end of the simulation. Like it started in a glitch. Like we're, we're about to run into the end of it. There are a couple, like there've been a couple of them and they like all end in different ways. Like they all crash eventually. Yeah. And, so, and, a, new one, ever... and a new one starts. And w- the theory is that we are at the end. Uh, one of the, I'm sure there are many theories and I haven't read them all. Sure. But uh, yeah, it, it would stand to reason that we are towards the end of our, our good run here. Wow. Well, um, two things on that. One, have you ever dipped your toes in the subreddit glitch in the matrix? Because that is the place oh, yeah, you can yeah, lose yeah, yourself yeah. online yeah, for sure. Yeah. If you're not familiar, basically it's people submitting stories from their real life or even photographs of things that are real, but seem like way too coincidental yeah. or like moments in their life where like technology act up they can't explain. It's kind of like spooky stories, but for the modern era, yeah. I guess like it's like you don't Black believe Mirror in ghosts, you could still yeah. yeah, you can believe in computers. Um <laughs> If you believe in ghosts, you can believe in computers. Is that what you just said? If, no, if you don't believe in ghosts, you can believe in okay. computers. <laughs> Not the other way around. I also do have, um, I'm trying to be better in my personal life about like maintaining routine and like keeping sure. things the same every day and, you know, trying to practice some delayed gratification. And so I do have my robot who I can't name because she'll start talking <laughs> um, she does remind me every day at 8 p.m. that it's doinks o'clock, which means it's safe for me to have my first joint of the day. So that is how I'm manipulating the simulation to better fit my needs. I mean, yeah, we all, uh, you know, have so, fa- have uh, found a way to work within uh, the simulation if oh, we I, are in one. Can I say something? I love it. Truthfully, hacked into it. Yeah, I, I look at look at look at us right now recording this podcast. Are, yeah, do, our voice being heard by yeah. millions. Uh, do you <laughs> millions? And that's all. Millions yeah, we 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 uh, hacked it. Would you take the red pill or the blue pill? This is probably a question for the end. I have thought about this. I would take the blue pill, no question. Are for you sure. fucking yes. kidding me? If a stranger asked Wait. me to take a pill that would change my reality, yeah, fuck no. Sarah, I've been with you in those rooms. Uh. <laughs> oh, you know what? Actually, I might, I might accidentally take the red pill. If you, if we were at that scary party, uh... oops, you're right. Yeah. Actually, I have, I have re- been red pilled in several <laughs> situations. <laughs> okay, but if someone gave me something yeah. and said it's literally going to change the way you, you can't go reality, back again, yeah, you, I am good. Like I actually, yeah, my cool. life is pretty good like my my life if is my pretty life good. is meaningless which like it kind of is it probably i mean not is, to yeah. get like fucking Nietzsche in here but yeah it probably is god is dead <laughs> like whatever baby may as well like try to have a good time take the Fuck. blue pill I will also yeah i'm, I'm <laughs> have a good pill. time take the blue pill and i will say estrogen pills now are blue so i yeah, I'm fucking with the blue pill, maybe. Um, I will also, to bring it back to the plot, I did have a moment of true... I- I've been binge-watching The Sopranos in anticipations of The Many Saints of Newark, which is opening this fucking Friday. Oh! Um, dude, Cypher is fucking Ralphie on The yeah. Sopranos. Yeah, oh my God. I was yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. something so mm-hmm. fucking unlikable about that fucking guy and you, I was you like, still hear oh like yeah because he has that harsh like new york tri-state area accent too still yes um, and on the sopranos he says who were i'm like ah oh, you piece of shit yeah, so yeah, i was like he's you know what slimy from Fuck the get-go this guy. yeah uh, yes slimy from great the actor get-go. uh but uh Ugh. we do meet so we're on the nebuchadnezzar we meet my favorite character uh uh tank Tank. Tank's the best. Uh, oh. He's also hot. He's adorable. Like, he's cute. I-, I wouldn't say hot. I'd say cute. 
Okay, I, I will concede on that one. But like in the way that like Anthony Ram, like the, yes. like he's got like that sweet. Sharp. Yeah, he's got a very sweet like, face, like sweet open face. face. Yeah. Mm. Um, he has some great line deliveries like all throughout this movie. He is. Uh, he does. You know what? When he has to say things, he says them he very makes fucking meal, well. Yeah, he makes a meal out of yeah. it. Yeah, he understands this is an opportunity. Yeah. I love to see that in a performance. Yeah. And we do learn from him that uh, there are still humans alive uh, in the place they refer to as Zion near the Earth's core is like the last refuge uh, of humans hiding from the robots. And uh, that's yes. that's the whole point. Like Mr. Every ship captain has the coordinates to Zion. And uh, that is like the goal of the Mr. Smith's agents uh, to get to Zion to wipe out the rest of the natural yes. born and, human race. And, and while they're and while they're taking care of resistors within the matrix, within the bigger mainframe, they have those sentinels. Is that what they're called? The squids. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to use a technical term. You're like, oh yeah, the robot squids. The the yeah, they call them squids that are trying to like hunt down the ship. Yes. They don't That's yeah, also they're, scary they're, and I don't like I, yeah, that was that was scary. Uh I like their little like satellite thing. They're very easy to trick though, so that's good. Yeah, they're not they don't seem to be like the most advanced in No, they're still working available. on those. Uh but <laughs> Uh, okay. Because they can just like shut off the lights and hide from them. Pretty much. They don't detect body uh, heat. They don't detect like. Yeah, this movie actually. So this is my. I'm coming in with fun facts. This movie is actually. Um, there's a couple of scenes in here that are almost directly then ripped off by Star Wars prequels. Yeah. Um. First of all, every major blockbuster film from like 1998 to 2004 were filmed in Australia. And I really think that influenced some crossover. I think it was, um, it was probably so, clearly very cheap to film there at that point. Oh, you gotta be. I mean, that's why um, the Matrix did it. Yeah. Um. So the squids, my, of course, my visual reference for any kind of underwater creature is like that shit in the Phantom Menace. Mm -hmm. um, but moving forward a little bit in the plot, if you'll allow me. So Neo Morpheus are training. Real quick, the dojo, kung fu, oh my god, delicious! Uh, like they had to have delicious, a, an amazing. I mean, that scene took like ten days to film, I think. But uh, uh, I believe it. Uh, yeah, I, I is like all the gesturing real? Like, cause that always makes me laugh. It's, I, I, I think to me, it's less the actual martial art and more of a nod to kung fu movies sure. and like the very classic yes. hong kong style of right the the pose the flying in the air like yeah visually very reminiscent of those yeah Chet Li movies and yeah bangers oh my god um yeah bruce lee movie sorry but uh yeah i get let's go back further back yeah yeah, time, I, 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 yeah yeah bruce lee movie but uh yeah, it's just them doing the like. It's fun the, too. Like it's really, it's fun really to watch. funny. The posing is just. I like. Were they drunk? What? <laughs> How do you do that earnestly? But uh, there's Neo hits a pose like literally in his climactic fight with Agent Smith in the oh my underground, God. where he like punches his shoulders in the air and like dust flies yes. off of his body. Fuck yeah! It's great. It's uh, that the training scene and also him just opening his eyes. I know kung fu incredible Ugh. incredible i wish i could download skills like that like that honestly that's the coolest part the red pill yeah yeah, yeah. if i if sick. i could just upload any i mean it's a little prophetic in that like the internet you can essentially do that but you forget it right away yeah but it doesn't happen that fast and it doesn't it, it's not internalized in my body yeah like i, I um, yeah so I've watched enough yeah, basketball so highlights sequence... that I should be able to dunk, but I can't. So <laughs> right, you should be able to. Um, so the sequence continues into a simulation of the Matrix, and we see the Red Woman test. Right? Oh yeah. So Neo is distracted by this beautiful woman in red. Morpheus says, "Look again. It's Agent Smith. The lesson here is that if something sticks out as out of the ordinary, or if your concentration is broken." The fucking AI can see that. They can read that. They're trying to fuck with you. My little fun fact, and to bring it back to Star Wars, is that the woman in the red dress plays a character in Attack of the Clones that services the exact same premise huh. of the red dress test. This has been 
This is online. You can Google this. I'm not That's saying really anything funny. fucking new. Um, but there's a scene where Anakin and Obi-Wan are walking through that bar because they're lo- right. undercover looking for the person who's yes. trying to assassinate Padme and attack of the clones. And um, Obi-Wan is teaching Anakin like you need, because he's just lost his lightsaber. And he's like, you need to better your focus. You need to be paying attention. Right. And a beautiful woman walks by and distracts Anakin. And Obi-Wan's like, hey, you were paying attention to her and not me. Same woman. That woman who distracts Anakin is the same woman Amazing. in this sequence. So like her full-time job is to be like hot lady who distracts distraction for the protagonist. Yeah. That's amazing. We're already we're... And I think for George Lucas, that's gotta be like an obvious nod, right? Like that can't be Probably. I don't know. We're an hour into this. Well, I know. I know. We're we're and we're yeah. Uh, we just got to him. There's just so much. It's the fucking Matrix. Like, if you weren't expecting to listen to a long episode, get the fuck out. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's really great. He knows kung fu now and all these martial arts, and they're like, yeah, they're, they're all like everyone on the ship gathered around to watch the fight. Uh, Morpheus yes. kicks his ass, but like they're all pretty impressed with Neo, but he fails the jump test. Uh, mm. he fails to manipulate the Matrix to jump from one building to another. Uh, right. in a really cool Looney Tunes esque kind of sequence where the floor bounces back and uh yes. makes him land. He learns from that because he wakes up and he's, you know, concussed, uh, probably. <laughs> and uh A little out of sorts. Little, and that's where you also learn that the, like, hey, if you if die shit happens to you in the Matrix, you yeah, die it, in real life. Because yeah, because yeah, your mind thinks it's real, so you know, and the mind can't survive without the body. All right. basic science stuff. Uh, <laughs> also, just to make it, we don't have to get into this, but like there's a comment about how the way Neo sees himself in the Matrix and how he's created is a self projection. Yeah. Based on the identity that he has assumed his entire life. Ah. And I think that is extremely interesting when we talk about gender dysphoria and also body dysphoria, like sure. just genuine physical dysphoria when the way you look does not align with the mental projection you have of yourself. Regardless of how extreme or how little that is, like for example, Bridget thinks she's tall. Um, <laughs> I think was I'm athletic. All, was this all a workaround to <laughs> dig at my height? No, but once I started to go into it, I realized I could dunk on you in this opportunity, so I did take it. Okay. But everything else I said was smart, and you should remember that. <laughs> um, I just think that's interesting. It's like it is interesting. They, they say it out loud in the film, yeah. like. And there's so many lines that what they confused say out loud me that's though is he advanced yeah. philosophy. What he confused what confused me is like, well, he looks exactly the same. <laughs> sure, because you know, like if you had to describe yourself to like a police sketch artist, you probably sure. could get something close to you, but it might not be 100% identical. Right. I I do wonder, like I did want to see like a side by side, like if if they digitally manipulated any of his features uh to look slightly different. Uh, oh yeah, I mean they probably just didn't have the money for that. But um, yeah. I will, I will bring up the role of Switch, who is the blonde woman with the pixie uh, cut. Yeah, I said sw- that, I said Cipher when I meant Switch a couple times in this podcast already. That's okay. I mean they, she dies pretty early on. Yeah. But something that the Wachowskis have confirmed is that originally they wanted Switch to present as femme, as a woman mm-hmm. in the Matrix. And in the bigger reality, Switch would actually be a man. Oh, wow. And so like in the original script, what they wanted to is portray this character that kind of takes on two separate identities depending on where they are. Mm-hmm. But that was, um, I think, deemed confusing by the studio <laughs> and uh, scrapped. Yeah. But then we do still have like, this androgynous character um and the, again the name is switch like some some of these no. like allegory comments it's like obviously you can yeah. see that you don't need like an expert to walk you, you would have to be if you have an open mind yes you would have to be like either purposely obtuse or just like not know uh anything about the wachowskis to not see the parallels while watching yeah. this movie um like yeah. once you know um and it's funny because even if they were, I don't like, again, we don't know what, what period in their, what stage in their transition they were in, but clearly, uh, you know, regardless of what stage, this was still part of their identity, whether they knew it or yes. not, which I think. Well, even to remove the trans aspect from it, identity in so many aspects of our world can be plugged into, I mean, it's really, it's just a great allegorical piece of work where it's not hard to relate to wanting 
uh, reality to expand and to expand, like to, okay, I'm just saying a lot of words now, but to open your consciousness beyond your unconscious biases and what you recognize as knowledge. I don't know. I think, is that not universal? Are people really just like okay with who they are? Maybe. I mean, I, maybe I'm projecting. I think if they are, they just like haven't. Um, I don't know. I think there's there's probably some sense of denial or like you know yeah. or or like I don't want to say or, it's or, good to qu- or willful ignorance of like or it doesn't True. or it doesn't bother them enough to to dwell on it. Yeah, I guess I don't want to say like you should question reality because uh, I mean there's a lot of reality that like is reality yes, like you know vaccines yes. are good for you like uh-huh. I I don't mean to, to to draw anybody to like. Full You're just conspiracy. saying do your own research. Do your own research. No, just like it's 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 a healthy activity yes. to re-examine who you are, your place yeah. in this world, and what you think you know. I think that's innate in uh you know. I think therefore in human I am. Uh um, yes. I th- but to get back to the film. But to talk about this film that we are maybe a quarter of the way through. But you know, we gotta talk about him seeing the Oracle. Uh, oh, and I love this scene. I love the Oracle so much. Uh, yeah, she, uh, yeah, they take him to the Oracle. There are a bunch of these uh, scary kids. Mutant uh, kids. Yeah, uh, there's the great- X-Men. The X-Men we, kids are We there. do see the X-Men. Uh, there is, uh, you know, the, the, the iconic There Is No Spoon uh, right. scene with uh, that kid with the shaved head, the Dalai Lama, the white Dalai Lama, yes. uh, bent in yes. spoons. Uh, and Neo is able to do it. Uh, Morpheus takes him there, thinking he is the one, the person who first the the this like I guess prophet of the Matrix of uh, you know human origin who realized how to manipulate the Matrix and make it do what he wants. Uh, yeah, he, he is supposed to come back. Morpheus believes that this is Neo. The Oracle will know for sure. The Oracle tells Neo, "You ain't the one." Baby, yes. baby, you ain't the one. And she also says, "Don't worry about the vase." Oh, that is a cool. Vase. That is a really and cool one of my favorite lines experience. of the film. Yeah, yeah, where the oracle says, "Like, oh, I said, don't worry about it." But the real question is, yeah. would you have knocked over the vase if I hadn't said anything? Like, oh my yeah. god, uh, what's gonna bake your noodle later? Which I also really love that term. Is if you would have knocked over the vase if I haven't said anything. Um, that but- is actually something I think about. A lot, yeah. like kind of the general idea of manifestation, and right. I mean, it's it's like, a it's, can you can you anxiety yourself into a reality? And literally, I struggle. I really had a hard time with intrusive thoughts. Yeah. last year for I don't know what oh, could my, make me more <laughs> nervous and anxious. What happened in twenty twenty? Yeah. Um, but that's literally something I had to say to myself, which was like, Sarah, if you continue to have these reoccurring mm-hmm. thoughts you're going to manifest them into reality. And so when I have an intrusive thought, I'm like, I do not accept this. <laughs> this is bullshit. Yeah. And I, I'm not going to will this into existence. There's certainly that, but there's there. I think that question is more a larger question about fate early in the movie when Neo first has his meeting with Morpheus. Yes. Uh, he says he doesn't believe in fate. Um, we learn that his fate is scripted in this code. Uh, he What's is, the academic term for it? It's like predetermined destination. Uh, predeterminism. I just probably just predeterminism. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. And, you know, he's learned, but he's he's since broken out of the matrix and this fate. But is he still? Yeah. I mean, again, it goes into and then back to what you were saying about manifesting thoughts. Yeah. He is this person who can now manipulate reality in the world. So what is what is fate to a god? Yeah. So what's also cool, I, I like that later on when Morpheus, because Neo says, Morpheus, I'm not the one. And Morpheus says, the oracle told you what you needed to hear. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like he he needed that pressure off of him. He needed that off of his shoulders so that he really could become the one. one. Um. Yeah, and that's where, so after that, they're leaving the Oracle. This is where we get the first deja vu thing with the black cat where he sees the duplicate of the I cat. Just, before, before we leave it entirely, one sentence. I think it is interesting that in a film, in a story, in a world that is so much about technology and reality, somehow there is still faith. Yeah. 
Well, that the characters still manage to have faith in an things that are yeah. beyond a binary, like, this is true, this is not true. Yeah. I mean, they still... And, like, putting faith in... E- even though the Oracle is an Oracle, you still have to choose I mean, there's still faith. there's still something, um, for lack of a better word, woo-woo about believing in an Oracle. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, there's still a supernatural element that you have to believe in to go see someone. Or it's just someone who... Because then wouldn't the Oracle be the one if she, like... Is is this non, know, right? non-robot who knows everything that's going to happen in the Matrix and what needs to happen? Then isn't she, you know, the ultimate god here? Well, Lily and Lana always say that they write their films and they lead their films with love first. So I think that's interesting that even in something so technical, right. uh, it can still possess like these almost supernatural almost religious yeah. themes as well. Yeah. I think that speaks to like the humanity of it. Anyway. I mean, yeah. I mean, anytime you talk about like philo- like guiding philosophies on how the world works, there's some, like even if you're denying religion in it, there's still like a bigger, headier topic oh, yeah. to be had. Yes. I mean, yeah. There's still, uh, I mean, in this movie, uh, they're, they're bad actors, but there is an omnipotent being controlling humans. Mm, yes. Uh but anyway, we get our deja vu. Let's not scene. think about that too much. <laughs> yeah, it, it it collapses in itself. But uh... Christ, yeah. But this is our this is the idea of the glitch in the matrix. That oopsie, the matrix is kind of showing its hand because we saw the same thing twice. Yeah, and then they're like, "Oh no, that means shit's about to go fucking yeah, down that, in a very serious yeah, way." Yeah, Agent Smith is their Smiths are uh, on their way, uh, and also Cipher has sold them out. Yes, we did and miss- that is also that we missed that scene. That is a great scene. That is a good scene where he's just like, "Fuck this! I should have taken the blue pill. Just put me like, do what you want yes. with me." And we were talking about how for some men it was like kind of a fear response, yeah. which made them double down on masculinity. Cipher is that character, for like sure. literally. That is in re- he's eating steak. Yeah, uh, and uh, only and, and, men and, and, eat steak. <laughs> famously. <laughs> Uh, that's for boys only. Yeah, I mean, you're you're seeing him buy into with that. You're seeing him buy into the world that uh, you know, the robots created. He's like, yes. I know the steak's not real, but it's delicious, and I'm gonna eat it. Uh, so he's like, why why am I trying to rage against this thing? Why don't I just succumb, be a part of it, uh, it yes. and go back to my life, like be able to live my Which life? Which I do. I do get. It. Yeah, um, I'm sure it's exhausting. It's not worth, uh, fighting. Yeah, it's not worth killing other people. Yeah, for... fi- fighting the world around you constantly is uh, probably yes. an exhausting way to live. Um, but yeah, don't sell out your friends, man. Asshole. Yeah. So there's this the huge chase sequence in an old building. Um, I love when they all of our guys get yeah. in. Oh my god, that is so cool! It always is cool. Like it, it yeah. it's cool back then. It's cool now. Also, this it's building is cool. crumbling at the seams. If when they slide down, the walls oh, break, yes. or they're like the yes. heaviest objects in the universe. If that's uh... yeah, just I, I I distinctly remember thinking about that as a kid for a very long time. There's there's a lot of images in this movie that woo rent free in my mind. Yeah, uh, back in the day. But yeah, them in the wall, Morpheus. Uh, Stays behind to try to sacrifice himself for Neo, which yes. he was told was going to happen by the yes. Oracle. And Neo does not want it to happen. He's like, but I'm not the one. Don't sacrifice yourself for me. Right. Um, but Morpheus is taken by the Smiths, who's going to be essentially mind tortured uh, to giving up yes. the coordinates and- of Zion. Yes. And then we have another racing clock. He comes back on the ship. Cypher is back and he is fully mutining his crew. Yes. Uh, we got a lot of deaths. Take out a lot of good people. Oh, uh, yeah. We we take out, like, our cute little intern on the ship, Mouse. Oh, yeah. Who had um, <laughs> who had virtual sex with the lady in red. Yeah, yeah. He he was the first to have VR sex. Uh, good for good him. Good man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we lose Switch. We lose APOC. Yeah. We lose... Um, we lose... Uh, uh, I can't remember his Tank's name. Tank's brother. Dozer. Dozer. Yeah, we think we lose Tank, but Tank's all right. Uh, yes. Tank comes through uh, and gets the and gets you know beams Kill him. Kill Cipher, thank Kill God. Kill Cipher, beams him back into the Matrix. But Neo's like, no, I gotta go back for our boy. We gotta go back. Yes, and he goes. Yes, he goes back. 
uh, and they're like, we're going to need guns. And then they're in a room of the most guns you've guns, ever seen. A lot of yeah, guns. You've never seen yes. so many guns. Uh, the most guns. Should we talk about guns in this movie? Uh, Speaking of 21st century woes. I mean, we have to, because I did text you. Like, I, I really enjoyed this movie. And I. Well, because we're coming up on, I guess to get ahead, I want to talk about the opening where they open fire in the lobby. Mm hmm. Yeah. And like specifically go off on like security. Yeah. And I don't know if you had this moment, but I just kind of had a recognizing of like, I don't think we see this so explicitly in action movies anymore. No, I tell ty- because Yeah, because when I, I, the only time we try not to talk during when we watch these movies because we <laughs> have, you know. Unless it's Fifty Shades, in which case, yeah. nonstop. Uh, like during the movie, we try to save it for you guys. But yeah, that was a thing. That scene particularly, I was thinking about it a little bit at the beginning that like most action movies we watch now, um, it's hand to hand combat for the most part. Like there are obviously guns, but not, I don't think to this extent, it's been a while since I saw this well, much gun violence in a movie. I, yes. I think, I mean, I could just be forgetting it. And, and because of well, uh, the, like what we know, this movie inspired a couple of yes. years later, it, it might be uh, a little no, harder to watch. Actually a few weeks later, a few unfortunately, we- yes. that was some, so if you don't know what we're talking about, um, the Columbine shooters, mm-hmm were wearing like they were the tr- they called themselves the trench coat mafia they were wearing all black long leather jackets they had multiple weapons i mean th- there's no evidence to say that they were purposefully emulating the imagery of the matrix however the similarities kind of can't be avoided mm-hmm. and unfortunately that shooting happened well unfortunately that shooting happened period but um in respect to this film it was like a few weeks yeah and so um something that i actually learned in my reading is that like even at the time there was a feeling of like is this movie like safe for people to watch like it was do we want to yeah. see this much gun violence in film i was i was and- surprised at how much it it kind of disturbed me specifically when they shot up the lobby uh when they shot all the security yes. guards and there was that huge shootout i i i again i've seen this movie a number of times it's never um i mean it's always been like it was like yeah it's a lot of guns but it, it, it never like pinged me as much as it did on this watch uh and yeah, i think and the I, last I, time I, I watched it i was like a sophomore in college so yeah uh, i think really for me, just our visual language has changed when we talk about when we when we look at violence in film. First of all, let's be real. Most action movies we see, probably more than half of them are franchises. Yeah. And every franchise has its own rule and its own set of guidance. Um, like Batman would never kill a person. And it's a lot of hand to hand combat or it's weapons that like don't, don't exist. exist. It's in like, real world. yeah, like Iron laser Man. Beams, yeah. Lightsabers. Like you know, like, yeah. Lightsabers don't cause anyone to bleed. Like, we don't see a lot of blood. Yeah. Um, and then, like, even violent films like James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, yeah. it's very stylized. So it doesn't seem like yeah, real people it, are it's cartoon- really... Well, I even think about John Wick uh, yes. movies, which are incredibly violent, but it is in... Again, it is very stylized. There's a fair amount of gun violence, but it's more... Like, the lighting is literally darker sleeker it's a little bit more it's it's more about the choreography than the vi- yes. like and the choreography certainly and this is cool and i think maybe that's why it pinged me a little more now that the like stunts of her running up the wall and like uh them jumping and freezing aren't as mind-blowing anymore it, yes you it's easier to concentrate on the bullets flying uh and they do yeah. make a point of showing like all the shells coming to the floor uh, but yeah, because I'm not as odd by the way they are moving, um, it it's uh, yeah harder to not notice. Yeah, the, I'll be yeah. honest, it didn't really register for me. Yeah, I was still into maybe I'm the a snowflake kung fu and all. No, I mean, but <laughs> I I do agree that like um, it's just like specifically the image of a group two white people wearing all black being heavily armored taking out a security checkpoint i think is such a literal interpretation of a reality that we currently live in every single day yeah and so um i think 
as yeah, 2021 I, people looking yeah. back, it's like, oh, you know, we now see this all the time, but for real. Yeah, which was interesting because like when I watched it in college, it, it certainly wasn't, you know, like I said, I think the last time I watched this movie, I was probably a sophomore in college and it wasn't like um, gun violence wasn't prevalent then. I think I just wasn't as... Um, I don't know. I I don't. I you know. I don't think I was. I as woke. No, when we were in college, I would say when we were in college, it was still kind of an abstract concept of like it's still it yeah. won't happen anywhere. Like it was happening, but it wasn't like oh, this could happen to me. It's still right. so very removed. And now it's so prevalent that you can't take any time here out of. Yeah, the house I mean, yeah, I think yeah, I, I I've certainly become more sensitive to it. I I don't think that's not not true. Um. Yeah, and sure. I mean, and clearly it was because this time it bothered me, and I don't think it ever bothered me this much uh, in any of my previous watchings. Uh, mm. uh, so I just, yeah, I just think that's interesting because I, yeah, because I do like action movies, but yeah, that that scene wasn't interesting to me anymore because I was like, they are just shooting the chore- they're just shooting the, each other. The yeah. choreography, like I remember that scene, thinking it was a cool scene with like the pillars breaking down and stuff. But like, it's not yes. that cool to me anymore. Like, I didn't like it. Uh, the choreography wasn't that great. Like, the fighting wasn't that great. Uh, yeah, and I think also, especially now that we know what Keanu Reeves is like capable, of, <laughs> he seems slow. Like some of the fight sequences seemed slow, and I couldn't tell if it was just because that's where we were in terms of fight sequencing back in that time Mm -hmm. or if is it like i at one point i gave it kind of the benefit of like well maybe like in the matrix things seem slower because you could be more exact when you are literally a kung fu expert i think i think we're kind i just think it was the filmmaking honestly and i i would disagree i think like i i think you're talking about some of those kung fu scenes where you see like their hands fighting and blocking and stuff yeah um what i think that i think that's uh, I would argue that's purposeful that you're seeing it almost in their mind because you do see shots where like there there's motion blurring yes. and it's clear they're moving fast, which I still love that to yeah. this day. Oh, that's still great. Uh, so cool. Uh, still seeing yeah the the slow motion bullet is still cool. Seeing him dodge the bullets, oh. seeing him stop the bullets is amazing. It, it's still sick. It's literally sick. It's still sick shit they have in here. It still all works for me. But uh, yeah, yes. I think that's slow. Like ha- like when you see the hand stuff, I think that's like that he know like it's slowed down in his mind because he's fighting it and i think that's what you're right. saying you're seeing more and also they had to film that so like <laughs> yeah yeah true, uh, true, but true. but yeah i know but definitely like you're underwhelmed by scenes of just people opening fire on each other because yeah. it's like one we get it and two it's not really adding anything exciting to like a pre-existing film canon of like well it's pretty easy just to shoot people. tell yeah. actors like yeah just open fire yeah yeah, that's uh, that's not that exciting to me visually, but uh, we do get, yeah. but then we do get the amazing scene in the subway, uh, between. Well, him. we we get the rooftop, the Matrix, the move, right? Yes, that we call the Matrix. Yeah. I wanted to ask, did you have a lot of schoolyard conversation about that move? Because me and my friends, of course, did a lot. Of course, it, yeah. it was constantly we're, we're, imitated. It was like, if you if you get the if you get the Matrix and charades, that's still like the first thing I would do. Oh, it's what you do. Yeah. Literally, yeah, you do. all you have to do yeah. is lean back and move your arms in a, yeah. that way, and everyone recognizes you're doing the Matrix. Yeah, it's slow it up, do the Matrix. It's in songs. It's iconic. Uh, it's there were there were many moments in this movie that I had a realization of like. Wow, this is the genesis yeah. of this trope. Uh, or like yeah. this is the blueprint of how like every film I've seen that has referenced this. This I is mean this movie is constantly referenced, constantly referenced and it it is like every Ugh. every time you go back to it you're like, "Yep, that's a shot. That's that shot." Especially in the beginning like, like Trinity in the phone, phone iconic. booth. Iconic. Uh, yes. I, uh, yeah, there there's so many just like stark incredible images in this movie, even if it's a little outdated uh, effects wise, uh, that still hold up because, uh, you know, it's they they look fucking awesome. Even if they you look know, cool, even if we did it now, it would look probably cooler or like it wouldn't be that big of a deal. They it, look cool. It's still jumping cool. ahead. Keanu Reeves stopping the like the helicopters crashing. He mm-hmm. realizes Trinity's still on board yeah. and like, he like whips his arm around to get the rope to like, Oh yeah. Secure himself. Oh my God. Like so fucking, first of all, hot. Second of all, cool. Extremely hot and cool. cool. Hot and cool. Total package. Morpheus, 
breaking his handcuff Cha- chains. Amazing. I think about that all the Another time. iconic image of his hands in uh, chain and then him breaking. With the fucking sprinklers on too. Uh, like it just yeah. is such They're all a wet. meal uh, visually. This whole this whole like action sequence yeah. of the, like, yeah. the third act is just delicious. Yeah, the the yeah, the chopper going down and them hanging from the rope and uh <sighs> yeah. And him oh, dropping when the morph- chopper yeah. hits the building and it and the windows wobble before they break. Yeah. Incredible. Bye. That is so uh, cool. That is so yeah, cool. Yeah, Morpheus like rolling on the building and then catching himself on the rail and like looking up and the Love Keanu. it. Oh, it's all so good. This the third act, we like once we get past the shooties, uh <laughs> uh incredible. The fight sequence again yes. the final fight sequence between Mr. Smith and Neo uh in the subway is absolutely incredible. Um, so to this so day, good. like it just Oh God, it, it's it's inspiring. <laughs> it really is fucking awesome. Uh, the train pulling up and a bunch of other agents yeah. coming out. Terrifying. Still terrifying. Terrifying. There's and the the agents, we've barely talked about them, but like um we're leading the what's so the how they're all so the same. Yes. And it is mostly Hugo weaving, right? I mean, he's all over this movie, but like how they cast the other agents to like relatively be the same height, same haircut. They speak the same. Yeah. They use the same tone of voice. They use the same attitude when they speak. They have the same posture. Like, yeah, it it really is cisgenderism. <laughs> like, yeah. It is the homogeny of the nuclear family, the status quo, this man and woman yeah. world. Like it, it it's so... It does such a nice job of portraying that in a evil light that actually the idea of everyone being the same is bad. Yeah. Uh, and it's better yeah. if people just get to be themselves and who they are and experience yeah. their individuality in real time and as it makes sense to them mm-hmm. versus these agents who represent like leave it to fucking beaver houses. And yeah, well, Hugo Weaving apparently for that accent emulated like a, a 1950s news anchor. Uh, oh, absolutely. I hear yeah. that. That's so, that yeah. makes so much sense. Yeah. So very like buttoned up guy yes. you listen to for your new. Keeping yeah. up with the Joneses. Yeah. Just all of that toxic. Yeah. Toxic. I call it suburb culture. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> suburb people. But like this, this world where we this value. cookie cutter world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uniformity. Like the same in everybody. Yeah, the uniformity uh, and the not the not quite. And Hugo Weaving is scary. He's in terrifying this like, in this genuinely movie. Genuinely a very he scary is villain. Incredible in this movie. Yeah, he is. A- and he's really, I think, clued into the bigger picture. And yeah. I think he not like in terms of literally be- representing like the oppression of a cis hetero society, but like just in terms of being an oppressive person. Yes. And being evil and cruel for just for the sake of yeah. being evil and also and cruel. being everywhere, feeling feeling unescapable. Yes, uh, and you, and they can they can show up wherever. It, like because yeah. even the homeless guy, you know, Becomes bubbling him. into yeah. Agent Smith. Yeah, like you can become that Ugh. that easily. Yeah, uh, it was funny. I mean, it's a good film. Let's a, just say it. It's a great. It's a film. good film. I, it was funny because I was reading. I I uh, I'm reading a book and uh, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, at, at one point in this book, someone like mentioned that someone's accent was stood out for being so um, unremarkable, like so plain. And I, I had a hard mm. time understanding what that was. And then I watched this movie and I was like, Hugo Weaving's accent, that stands out for being so blank. Uh, wow. That's what that, like, I, yeah, that, it, totally separate note. But it, it was a great way to kind of explain no, that but accent. That's, that's interesting. It's, it was yeah. an interesting way to explain that accent. Because it is a very stylized way of speaking. But like there's nothing to it. Like that's yes. why it's stylized is because it's so bland. Uh, yeah. Uh, he does a great job. He does a great job. Lord Fitchford and uh, Keanu Reeves, who I guess like first five lines in this movie are all questions, which beautiful Keanu yeah, Reeves. Keanu, I mean, Keanu Reeves is always asking questions in his films. Let's yes. be real. Uh, he, that man... He has questions. Yeah, Carrie Ann Moss, great, hot as hell. The one thing I would question about this movie uh, is that uh, they did give, you know, your cool female lead. Her whole point is like, the Oracle told me I would fall in love with the one. And that, yes. yeah, you're just like, oh, man. It, but I you hate know that. What? That's it's... your whole purpose in life. But 
Yeah, that is weird. I haven't seen the sequel, so I do. I don't know, like, if they ever talk about, like, because she says, like, everything the oracle, oracle has told me has come true. And I don't know if it's including that statement or if that's, like, the only statement. And in which case, <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah, that, that part just seems like we didn't, like, Maybe some internalized misogyny here. For sure. A hundred percent. And then they're like, um, and then the Oracle the way... was like, you're cuter than I thought. I could see why she likes you. Not too bright though. Oh yeah. Great. But little yeah. stupid. Yeah, little stupid. Um, I yeah. will say though, visually the way that's filmed, the two of them kissing and like him coming back. Yeah. Ah, really nice. Great. Really, really nice. Nicely filmed movie. Movie has good imagery. Yes. Good pictures. Good, good moving picture. You know, you can pause. You can pause, and it's like mm, every, every every frame, frame is a painting. Oh, interesting. Uh, I first coined that term right now. Actually, no one's ever said that before. T M except for me. R Sarah. Griffin. I went to film school. <laughs> hey, I didn't. Um, where are we? Where so, I mean, we're at the end of the movie. Yes, <laughs> Neo stops the bullets. Yeah, because he realizes he is the one, He's, and he has like a moment of self realization of like, oh wait a second, I actually can manipulate all of yes. this. Yes, so he yeah he learns how to hack. He come he becomes super op as they would say online. He uh he learns to hack the matrix. Yes, hack real time in real life. Yes. Uh, um, very cool. Yeah, I mean, defeats. Yeah, we I defeats Smith for this round, but then you know goes back to the Nebuchadnezzar. We have. We have a diminished crew, but they're mighty and strong with Trinity and Tank. Also, and- that ship took a beating because the squid robots were also fucking him up during all this. This is true. Uh, but, you know. But again, very easily to just flip a switch. Yeah. And then, uh, so. Get rid of them. Yeah. So, you know, Agent Smith's still out there. Our boys are on the ship. Uh, Neo has this newfound power. Also, uh, we skipped over a scene that I love in it. It's just worth mentioning the, uh, do you know how to fly that? I can. And then just uploads. Yes. I need to upload. Yes. Incre- yeah. We, oh, we talked about so that cool. is the best power in the world that you could just be like, Ed, yeah. yep. That, no. that is truly of all the things about this movie that I really could use in the real world. Yeah. Right there, baby. Yeah. I don't need to bend my body any kind of way. No. I, I just. I just want to learn I just want to. Ha- yeah. Just have skills immediately brought to me uh yeah oh wow well um well we're clocking in an hour and a half uh yeah we've talked the shit out of this movie i really don't think i have anything else to say except we have that uh it's we've got more movies to watch this is really a great film that i did not appreciate and and this is kind of the general consensus of the articles i read that like this whole idea of looking at this film through a trans lens really became popular, obviously after the Wachowski sisters came out. Um, And since I have known that I actually rewatched this movie in 2019, it really does become just like such a more elevated film. It does. Uh, Can I say the first time I watched this movie, uh, it was probably early aughts uh, or, you know, mid aughts, mid to late aughts in a, my senior year uh economics class to interesting to learn about our opportunity costs like the the assignment was to okay. watch the matrix and track neo's opportunity costs like at every decision he makes that is very interesting uh so that was the first time i saw the matrix and it's a very different hmm. lens to watch the movie under when you just think about like the choices that are made along the yeah, way yeah but that is an interesting it, lens to look it at is it a too. Real, yeah it, it definitely like sh- shaped my first viewing of the movie and then i watched it you yeah. know a couple more times watched it in film school with like a filmmaking le- like it, it does i mean i've enjoyed and taken something new away from this movie every time i've watched it um, yes, because there are so many ways to view it, and our understanding of it keeps. It's growing. like a kaleidoscope. There's a there's a lot of multiple yeah. lenses that you can view this in, and together it makes this beautiful picture. And it really does. Yeah, it, yeah. You can we. Could, I don't want to say it fits everything. Like you know, no, that's not but fair to but say, you can but, talk uh, about it at, like endlessly because it brings up so many interesting just thought. I love movies that are that introduce thought experiments that's my favorite thing that a movie can do and this movie uh does a lot of that and does it really well masterfully yeah uh that yeah it's it's great as Uh, to the sequels i've heard 
my what I know about the sequels is that a lot of people fucking hated them, mm-hmm. but I do know many people whose film opinions I trust deeply who are Wachowski apologists mm. and will always defend them. And I truly though, like Lily and Lana really are putting shit out there that like who else is making an original yeah. Big budget, high concept. I'm ex- uh, Yeah, I'm excited to rewatch these sequels because I've only seen them. I didn't like them, but I've only seen them years ago, once each maybe on basic cable. So yeah. bits and pieces I saw. I, I don't think I've sat through them in earnest all the way through. Uh, not on I, I like, like TNT a- reruns. Yeah, I feel like they made a movie that I actually saw not too long ago and fully was like, I have to leave this movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we're in for more. Not. This was at least good. But we got a good movie under our belts for this podcast. Uh, yes. About damn time. We'll, uh, but I don't know. I might like I might like the sequels. I'm not going to say. I've never seen them. I literally really have nothing. I, I All I know is that they have those albino twins who have like very mm-hmm, severe yeah. platinum locks. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and that's like literally all I know. Uh, yeah. So we're introducing you to m- new movies again. I am pretty much coming into these cold. I do not remember a lot besides thinking they were Great. not as good. So, uh, Great. we'll we'll see you guys on the next one. Uh, well, yeah. See us on Twitter too. Yeah, we should plug. Oh right. Uh, yes. Well, yes. Yeah, so you're listening to us on the Small Beans Network. Bridget and I have a couple other shows on there. Rough stuff and the cast and the curious. You want to check that out. Um, I post about it, everything at my Twitter account, SK underscore Griffith. Bridget is also online. Uh, yeah, I retweet those posts uh, at uh, <laughs> Bridget tweets. Uh, but you can find ev- all of us and everything that we're talking about at our Patreon. Small Beans, check it out if you can afford it. Support the network. Yeah. It's fun. It's it's fun to be in the community. And thank you if you're already supporting. Yes. Uh, so good. that said, let's unplug from the Matrix and um, eat some gruel. Let's do it. <laughs> or whatever the fuck they eat on that shit. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. This has been a Small Beans Endeavor. We're a bunch of pals who make podcasts, sketches, music, web series, and movies. The beans always have new ideas percolating, so make sure to check us out at patreon.com slash small beans. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash small beans, where you can browse all of our current and past content, see what we've got planned in the future, and learn how your support can help the small beans grow into huge giant monster beans. If you enjoyed this content module, please like, rate, subscribe, or tell a friend about us. We love you.